I filmed this once already and my audio was non-existent. I'm starting to think this curse has more validity than I'm giving it credit for. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina and today is a Sunday and you're probably thinking you don't upload on Sundays. Well, I've decided I wanted to start a newish series. This is going to be Spooky Stories Sunday and I'm going to tell you some spooky stories. If you follow me on Instagram or if you used to follow me on Twitch, then you know I have a thing for spooky stories, especially ghost stories. I'm a skeptic kind of because I've never seen anything that proves ghosts to be real or non-real, but you know, I try to keep an open mind about it and I just typically like scary stories. And so that's what I'm here to do today. Now this is largely inspired by of course the wonderful Bailey Sarian who does true crime and does her makeup. I'm gonna be doing largely the same thing, but I'm gonna be telling you a spooky story and doing my makeup. There's a ton of other YouTubers who are jumping on this trend and I am 100% behind this trend because I think it's a lot more interesting. Personally, like learning a lot. I frequently fall down research rabbit holes and I just like learning new things. So Bailey Sarian is the main YouTuber that I got inspiration from, but there are other YouTubers. So if this is a genre that you are really into, Jamie French also does this kind of thing. She does her makeup and talks about movies, which are hilarious. Hilarious. I've really been enjoying her videos. Then Sydney Black is also doing some. She does her makeup and talks about random history things. And then Robert Welsh, Walsh. Robert Welsh does ghost stories and makeup. So mine is very similar to Robert's, but I specifically kind of want to take a history twist on a lot of these. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. I plan on doing these every Sunday until the weekend of Halloween. And depending on how it goes, we may continue this. But for now, I just wanted something for spooky season because with Halloween being canceled this year, I need all of the spooks I can get. And I'm sure you guys feel the same. So that's what we're going to be doing. And today we're going to be talking about the curse of of Dudley Town. Have you ever heard of it? I had never heard of it. If you are curious about any of the makeup I'll be using today, I'll make sure to list it down in the description for you. But otherwise, I will not be talking about it. And hopefully this goes better than the first time I filmed this. One, I hope the audio actually works. I think I figured out the problem. And two, my first eye looked, looked a little crazy. So like I briefly mentioned, I had never heard of the curse of Dudley Town until one day my husband and I were sharing ghost stories. Get you a man who's as weird as you are. But we were sharing ghost stories and he decided to tell me this one about Dudley Town. So my husband went to the University of Indiana and he went to school with a girl who was from Connecticut, which is where Dudley Town is is located. Dudley Town is located in the town or the county of Cornwall or Cornwell. And it's not actually a town. It's just a location, basically. She was from around the local area and legends go that Dudley Town was cursed. I feel like most towns have this, especially small towns. I grew up in a really small town and there was like this one bridge that we called like Crybaby Bridge. And I've now learned that like a lot of towns have this kind of stuff. So a lot of kids in high school would go and explore the area. And Dudley Town is really just like a forested area. It's really pretty when you see pictures of it. It's just very green and lush. And it's located in between two mountains. The mountain's name are Bald Mountain and Cross, Cross something mountain. Where are my notes? I need my notes. Colt Foot Mountain. I knew that. But it's just like one of those local spots that you go with your friend, you know, on the weekends because one, there's nothing else to do. And two, ooh, it's spooky, you know? It just seemed like one of those kind of places. So this girl was telling my husband back in college how she knew a girl who her brother or her cousin, someone related to one of her friends, decided that they wanted to go and investigate Dudley Town, which I don't know if they were an amateur paranormal investigator. I don't know what investigate really means in this circumstance, but he apparently wanted to go and investigate. So he loads up his car and he's getting ready to go. And he, for whatever reason, decides to go by himself. He decides, I'm gonna go explore and investigate Dudley Town all alone, which, Someone didn't watch enough horror movies growing up. I don't know if anyone tried to stop him. I'm not really sure what the backstory is on that, but it's just a story. Let's continue. So he leaves, goes on his merry way, and no one really hears anything for a couple days. They're like, hmm, 
Well, we let him go off and I guess we're just not gonna check in on him for a couple days, but a couple days go past and people realize, hey, have you heard from what's his face? And everyone's like, oh no, I thought you were gonna check in on him. But they realize he's been gone for a while and no one's heard from him. I guess there's no cell service. Actually, this is something that I came across quite frequently in my research is that people say it's very eerily quiet and a lot of people do lose cell service in the forest. So maybe he had lost cell service. Maybe this was before cell phones. I'm not exactly sure what the date of this story Story was supposed to be but either way no one's heard from him for a few days so they all decide to go and check in and see what happened you know make sure he's not out in the woods somewhere by himself hurt so they all head out to Dudley Town to try and find their friend or cousin or brother or whoever he is and they're searching and so far the search comes up completely empty there's no footprints leading anywhere there's no like sign of human life like at all so they get closer and closer to the area where dudley town is and they find his car and i'm sure at this point they're thinking mm, that's suspicious why is his car just here and he's not here and it was even more suspicious because on closer inspection of the car it looked like he had left the car in quite a hurry the lights had been left on the door was still open so naturally after a few days like that your car battery dies so the car was dead with the door open the lights were in the on position not clearly on because again the battery was dead but they could tell that it looked like someone had gotten out and had every intention of coming back to the car you don't typically get out of your car and not shut it off you know the keys were still in the ignition it just looked like someone had left in a really big rush so they're like well he couldn't have gone far either he was kidnapped or he like went off to go i don't know take a leak and just didn't come back well let's go search this immediate area so the search party takes off into the forest around the immediate area trying to see if there's any sign of footprints any sign of him like maybe falling and getting hurt he has to be somewhere around here right and nothing shows up there's no footprints there's no sign of a struggle in any way there's just absolutely nothing so they're like well we need to extend the search out maybe he just got lost maybe he walked too far away from his car and just didn't know where he was we have to extend so they decided to extend the search party and they're just getting closer and closer to the actual location of dudley town and of course you know urban legends go everyone's like oh well we're getting very close so dudley town again is an abandoned town it's technically private property so i do not recommend anyone do this do not go and try to investigate especially not by yourself just don't do it kids but they're getting closer and they're of course getting slightly freaked out because you know it's an abandoned ghost town but they decide to push on and they keep going and they eventually arrive right outside the ghost town and they've still seen nothing Everyone is too scared to go any further. And as the story goes, he was never seen or heard from again. They never found him. And that's the story that my husband told me and I was intrigued. I was like, well, I need to know what is this curse? Why are people going missing? There's also apparently an urban legend around Dudley Town that you take nothing from the area because if you take it, you will also subsequently be cursed. So. There's tons of stories, and if you know anyone who has a story like this, please let us know in the comments because I find this fascinating. I read a lot of stories online of people being like, I went camping in Dudley, like in the forest around Dudley Town in like 1996 when I was really young and I decided to take a rock. And that rock was the worst decision of my life. A little dramatic, but you know, the only rock I would contemplate stealing is maybe Dwayne Johnson, but I'm a happily married woman, so. And he's also married with children. Anyways, don't take rocks from Cursed Forest is what I've learned. That's how the urban legend goes. And again, I was very curious. I was like, well, God, we, we gotta look this up. I have to fall down like 10,000 rabbit holes of research and let us learn together. So as I mentioned at the top of this video, Dudley Town is an established settlement. It's not technically a town. It's settled in the county or the town of Corn Cornwall, Cornwall, one of those in Connecticut. So all of my Connecticut, it, Connecticans? Connecticans? Is that what we call people from Connecticut? What do we call you? But Dudley Town was established in 1740 by a man named Thomas Griffiths. I think is how you pronounce it. I'll put his name up on the screen for you. But by Thomas Griffiths was apparently who found and originally settled the area or the land. 
So as I mentioned, the land is settled in between two mountains, so it's essentially in a mountain valley. Not exactly the most ideal spot, in my opinion, for a new settlement, but you know, Thomas do you. Originally, it is said that the town had the name Owlsbury because of all of the local owls that are in the forest, which, what a cute name. Like. I wish it would have stayed that name. I like that so much better. But anyways, you're probably wondering well, where the heck did the name Dudley Town come from and where is the curse? Don't worry, I was also with you. I was like, this all seems very normal. I have, I've read all kinds of stuff about the original settlements in the United States and you know, they were pretty rough. It was, it was hard times. People just kind of found land and decided to settle it and it, whether or not it was theirs, you know. So again, this place was originally called Owlsbury, which I think is so much nicer, but it, it it wasn't very clear. I found a lot of like contradictory information about like who really settled it, who really lived there, what it was there for. But anyways, you essentially have to think you came with nothing typically. You found a plot of land, you claimed it as your own, which we all have issue with. I just broke my palette. Two, two shades fell out, what the heck? Oh my God, maybe this curse is real. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this, you guys. Or I don't even know where the other shade went. Hello? Anyways, but you would find these places and they would essentially be just woodlands. You would have to clear the trees in order to build your house and plant anything. So the first thing you have to do in these settlements is clear all of these trees. And in the case of Owlsbury, later to be known as Dudley Town, there was also copious amounts of boulders. So there was rocks everywhere, trees everywhere. It was not an easy feat for one Thomas to take on, you know? So eventually more people arrive and the people that we are talking about are are the Dudleys. So the Dudleys, I found again contradictory information. I don't know I don't know who out of the Dudleys were the first to arrive. I saw that either Gideon Dudley arrived in like 1750 or two brothers Abel and Barsalii. I'll put their names up on the screen as well. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their names 100% correctly or they were the first ones to arrive. But either way, all three of them ended up arriving in the 1750s somewhere in. And from there, I'm guessing they decided, well, we want to settle here too. We'll help out. We'll start getting, you know, the settlement in order. We'll start helping take down trees. We'll start building houses. We'll get this all going. So that happened and as I'm reading all of this, I'm still like, where is this curse? So apparently the curse was already in place when the Dudleys arrived. The Dudley clan had been cursed for generations already at this point. Their curse goes back, supposedly, allegedly, to the year 1510 and Edmund Dudley. So Edmund Dudley was a, was a man who was executed in the 1500s for treason against the royal family. I found again a lot of contradictory information on this but for the most part it seems like he ended up he was like a financial consultant or a financial advisor in some way to King Henry VII. He was later executed not long after Henry VII's death because of treason. But for me, reading some of the information, it just seems like Henry VII's son, Henry VIII, who was a total womanizer. We all know this man. He had like six wives throughout his life. Very interesting. I'll link some articles about him as well. But it just kind of seemed like Henry VIII wanted to execute anyone who worked under his father who he didn't deem as worthy of his reign on the throne. Because Henry VIII was notoriously known for not wanting to be like his father. He was appointed king at the age of 17 when his father died. That's kind of young. I think all 17 year olds are like adamantly against their parents. But apparently when Edmund was executed for whatever treasonous thing he had done, which I'm not really 100% sure on, I saw that he like tried to take over the throne himself, that he tried to set up his son to marry into the royal family to then take over the throne. There's lots, again, contradictory information. Couldn't find anything too concrete, but if you do know, let me know down in the comments what exactly happened. But either way, no matter what happened, Edmund was executed and apparently the king decided when he was executed that every generation of Dudleys from there on out would be cursed. And that just makes me question, was Henry VIII a witch? Because like, who cursed him? He just said it and those words had power? Come on now, like it's not adding up. At least not in my opinion, it didn't add up. It was very confusing. 
but that's all I could really find on the curse and that was the origin story of the curse from the 1500s by a king who said that you your family would be cursed for generations I mean conspiracy theory all royal families are witches and they're upholding their witchy ways by upholding monarchies it's a far-fetched theory okay I haven't thought about it too much anyways that's all I could find on the curse and so after I'd researched that, I was like, well, I'm not really on board with this. This just sounds like, you know, local legend. Like, there's no definitive proof on anything. But then I started reading some more. And I have to say, as much as it does seem like it was just conjecture at this point, that it was just happenstance, and it may as well be, but regardless, Dudley Town had a very very i was gonna say lucrative that's not the right word they had a very tumultuous series of unfortunate events and i don't mean the lemony snicket novels because those were fantastic but not like that it was actually like really bad you guys so first off it does seem like it was incredibly difficult to get the town set the t i'm putting air quotes around town because it's not technically a town i just keep saying it because town's in the name but anyways, at some point when the Dudleys arrive, the name get changed, gets changed to Dudley Town. So I'm, I'm either assuming that the Dudleys are really just a pretentious clan of people, or they really did do a lot as far as settling. I'm not, again, 100% sure on that. Through my research, I, I, I don't know, but the town was eventually changed from Aylesbury to Dudley Town. So I'm guessing the Dudleys were a predominant family in this little settlement, but it took them a long time to get the place settled. So like I said, Abel and his brother and Gideon all arrived in the 1750s at least. It wasn't until 1800 that the that the settlement even had established roads. And at that point, they only even had two established roads. They didn't have a schoolhouse. They didn't have many families even living there. They had a common place in the middle of town, town, and two roads. One road was of course named like Dudley Road or something like that. And then the other road, I, I just have, it has literally no relevance, but when I read this, I was like, well, that's freaking ominous. The other road was called Dark Entry Road. It sounds like you're inviting demons in there to me. It was only named that because of how tall the trees were and it was literally dark all the time. So it's it's a literal name. It was the Dark Entry Road, but it just, it's kind of funny to me because it just seems so freaking ominous. So, I mean, but that is only by the year 1800. I mean, this settlement took 50 years, multiple generations to even get to a somewhat kind of livable state. And it just doesn't seem like it's doing well. So the roads were also made because the farming wasn't successful. They were having a really hard time growing their crops because I mean, again, they're in between two mountains. It's not an ideal spot for agriculture. So they're having a hard time with their crops. So they're having to outsource essentially to neighboring areas to get food because they're just not growing enough of their own food so they're having to do that so that's the need for the roads and this is where stuff starts to go awry so out of the three dudley brothers that originally landed i can't remember which one it was i want to say it was abel or abel however you pronounce his name it's noted that he started to go a little crazy there is talk that he started talking about seeing hooved dark figures in the woods outside of his house very frequently he just started kind of talking nonsense is basically what they were saying is he just seemed to be losing his mind a little bit and you know people were suspicious of it he wasn't the only one though it has been noted that other residents of dudley town also started to go a little quote unquote crazy i'm using that word lightly okay there was also a lot of unfortunate circumstances around people taking their own lives in the area and again people think it was because of the curse that that people would be driven insane by the curse that was around the dudleys so a lot of people would go crazy and in their own lives there was a lot of that happening i personally think it could be possibly connected to the fact that like they weren't able to grow their own food and that there was no sanitation really in this time period maybe that's just me thinking there could be other reasons why people could go in insane and maybe it's not a curse but but a few instances like that happened people were taking their lives people were talking about hoofed creatures which the amount of people who talked about hoofed creatures does make me a little suspicious like i said but it wasn't until a family what is his name john 
John Brophy. He moved into Dudley Town with his wife and kids. And I honestly, their story is one of the saddest for me. So this man named John Bro Brophy moves in with his wife and kids into Dudley Town. Not long after they move in, his wife and him are out on their front porch and she is allegedly struck by lightning and dies instantly. Like what? Like she's just hanging out on their front porch and she just gets struck by lightning? Like that, that's freaking tragic. And I know freak accidents happen all the time, but like when I read that, I was like, oh, well, maybe there is a curse. Cause what the heck? Like all of these people are taking their lives. All of these people are talking about hooved creatures in the forest at night. And then this woman just gets struck down by lightning. After John's wife tragically passes away, he is said to have kind of lost his mind a little bit, which, you know, is on par for the rest of Dudley Town, to be honest, but also kind of makes more sense in his scenario. I mean, he just watched his wife get struck by lightning and die. So like, I feel like the man's allowed allowed to lose his mind a little bit at this point like give the guy a break you know but that's not the end of john's struggles in this not long after his wife dies and he slightly loses his mind his two children end up going into the forest and they are never seen again he completely loses his children like they're gone no bodies were ever found they found nothing they were just poof he lost his whole family in a matter of a few years after moving to the settlement, like, like, I don't know, but I think I would be a little cuckoo at this point. I don't know what I would do. Like your whole family's, your entire world is now gone. And John is one of the last people that we know that lives in Dudley Town too, before it is ultimately abandoned in I think 1920. I did read that basically after the Civil War ended, people just slowly started dwindling out of Dudley Town, and it just got smaller and smaller until it was completely abandoned by, by 1920. And I think, like I said, I think John Brophy was one of the last people that we know lived there. So now the town, the town of Dudley is still standing, technically kind of, it still exists as an area on a map, but it's there's no settlement. If you go, I've heard that there's just foundation bases that have basically just turned to rubble at this point. But the county of Cornwall, Cornwell, doesn't want visitors. It is private property. They don't want people coming to investigate anymore, probably because people are disappearing in the woods, but allegedly. But yeah, on their like historical website, they are trying so hard to disprove that a curse even exists. So people stop trying to come and investigate for ghosts. So I don't know what to believe. I feel like if it was real as a, as an area, I would want more people to come visit, you know? So it almost makes me think that it's really not haunted and it's just local legend. But I do have to admit, that is a lot of tragedy to happen in one little area. It's also an old place. Tragedy kind of happens in all sorts of places in this country, like especially early on. So it's it doesn't seem too abnormal to me. And like I said, I couldn't find any proof of like who actually had cursed the Dudleys or even that Edmund Dudley and the Dudleys in America were even related. They could have been, you know, maybe they were distant cousins, but like, does that still mean the curse affects them too? I don't know. Let me throw on my mascara real quick and I'll be right back. And that you guys, let me just throw on my lipstick is the Dudley Town curse. So like I said, the area doesn't really exist anymore. You will get fined for trespassing if you even try to go near it. And all that's left is foundations anyways in a beautiful green lush forest. But yeah, what do you guys think? You think the curse of Dudley Town has any validity? I couldn't find anything that I think absolutely substantiates the claim. I think it's just urban legend, but it does lead for some very good spooky stories to tell around a campfire. And I'll probably continue to tell that story to people if they want to listen to it, because it's fun to tell, man. It's just, I love it when people just disappear into thin air in stories, not in real life, just stories, you know? So yeah, guys, this was the first installment of my Spooky Stories Sundays. And definitely let me know what you think down in the comments. Give this video a like if you want these to continue. And if you have any spooky stories that you would like me to look into or talk about, leave those down in the comments as well. And also feel free to fact check me. Again, I did 
random assortments of research. My husband also helped me do some research on this as well since he was the one that originally told me the story. So it is a bit of a hodgepodge, but I will have all of my sources down in the description as well as I might include my Google Doc that had basically my script on it. It had all my notes for, for this video. So that will all be down in the description. And I will also link all of the other YouTubers who are doing videos similar to this. Again, I, I took a lot of inspiration from Bailey Syrian and I really like this trend. Like I said, I really like that this is kind of where like get ready with me's are going because it's just very interesting and a little bit more entertaining than talking about myself. So again, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Remember to stay safe out there and just, you know, enjoy some spooky times. And that means I will see all of you guys next Sunday. Hit that subscribe button before you go and I will see you then. Bye!